moment of yeah, truth. moment of truth right here. Oh, it's not perfect. Um, what? Stop. Stop it? What did I do? All right, so we had to learn how to do the pass-through method um, because our piece that we are cutting out is bigger than the size of our bed. So it took us a little bit of trial and error and uh, a little practicing on a smaller scale until now we're doing it on a big boy scale. We decided to practice the, the pass-through on a smaller scale. One, so we don't have to waste material was the big one and then also it's just a little easier when you're working with something smaller the biggest thing you have to do when you're working with a pass-through is you have to use registration marks and so it doesn't matter how big or small your project is we were trying to figure out how that worked um, it was just easier to do it on a smaller scale inside our, our workspace all right that's we are good frame it I'm pretty close to the edge do you want me to scoot it over a little bit? Yeah, we got, we got extra over here. Yeah. Okay. So we we ended up not having to move the machine because we thought our pass through was going to require us to pass the whole sheet of material through the entire machine. But we learned uh, a method to using registration marks so that we didn't have to do that. We could do half of the design and then use those marks to line it up to then rotate the material how we needed to to do the other half of the design. We did have to push the material bigger, I mean, into into a space past our our work bed, but it was within the machine and we didn't have to. Yeah, we got lucky that the actual logo was not as large as we thought it was gonna be. So we just put half of it through and we figured out, hey, we could actually spin it 180 degrees, line up the registration marks and cut that side and it actually worked out. So we didn't have to move our machine, which was awesome because that's just a lot more time and effort we'd have to put in that one little you know, project. That is making the registration marks that we'll use to line up for later and now it's cutting the top half. The first couple of times we tried it, we were, we were not getting the registration marks completely lined up. At all. I don't exactly remember the issue. <laughs> um, I think it was just user error and we weren't, yeah. It, it just took a few times to, to figure out, figure it out. Yeah, the, the key to building something with a pastor is just repetition. Practice, practice, practice. The more you do it, the better you're at it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you kind of figure out what your machine does and doesn't do. And if you've got any minor offsets, you can kind of figure out what you need to do. And every machine is different, so you have to work with your own machine. I was watching a tutorial from someone that has the same, that uses the same software program, but either ours is updated or theirs is updated or something, so it was a little bit different, and theirs did something automatically that ours did not do automatically, and I didn't realize that until I tried a couple times, and then we figured out that was why things weren't working. That was one of the reasons why things weren't working perfectly. The cool part about this one is, you probably won't figure out what so this is the third cut of the logo that we're making, the large logo. So we did two first. We're going to make this thing three quarters inch thick. We're using one quarter inch alder, so we'll put three layers together, um, glue them up. The first two layers actually have pre-drilled holes to where we're going to insert the um, standoffs for the wall. So we're going to use a two inch standoff uh, when we put this display on the wall. So Instead of having to drill later on, we just go ahead and pre-cut those and then we just have to insert um, the bolts with some adhesive, which will make it really easy to install. We're also going to do a cardboard template on the background that already has the uh, offset holes located on those. So we literally tape the template up on the wall, drill everything in. Hopefully it works out pretty good, pretty simple, um, but we'll see. Other challenges with a project using a pass-through is honestly looking at the project itself and figuring out where to cut it in half or cut it in thirds or whatever you have to do to chop it down and, and being able to recognize where you can put registration marks in a very visible place that's not going to interfere with part of the project as you slide forward or backwards um, putting it through the laser machine. Yeah. Look at that. Here, so 
is where it gets is the important part. So the goal here now is to line up the registration marks which are the large circles with the uh, crosshairs in the middle. So we'll do, we get close, so you like that there, on the first one. Zoom all the way around if you want to swing over here. Mark up with this. So we'll go ahead and get the, the horizontal pretty, pretty close freehand. Then we'll lock our board down. Yeah, and then I'm going to go on the computer and get it perfect, which although that looks. Yeah, so that's perfect. So it's momentum. <laughs> so now. Uh, you can move the the laser on the computer like 0 0.10 inches and so that kind of helps you get it perfect in the crosshair there so i mean you can adjust it but that's just what i've been adjust how far it jumps over but i've been doing this because it helps get it right on the money Oh, I saw the color change, so that's good. Okay, so this, then you lock this in. So this is what will let you know if you've got it like lined up, because you go to frame it, and as long as your, your red dot lines up with this perfectly, and it did. And then we'll check the other one when it gets to that one. And then you should be good. Luckily, it was a somewhat simple design, so there wasn't, it wasn't very busy, so it was kind of easy to, you could see where the line was going to go, and it wasn't going to interfere with several different points of the design. Correct, yeah. Moment of yeah, truth. Moment of truth right here. Oh, it's not perfect. Oh. It's going to be fine, but it's not perfect. I don't know what's happening. I'm thinking because that board is getting warped back there. Uh, so that's what we're talking about, our pre-drilled holes for our standoffs or what do we call? So then, a little more on here. Let's try it. There we go. <laughs> so that glue's on the top. Glue it up, polyurethane it, ship it out, or install it. Okay. Cool. Cool. Done. It's big. Good job. Practice, practice, practice. Repetition. That's the only way you're going to get good at it. Um, if I tried to do it right now, I would have to do three or four runs at it just to remind myself how to do it. And um, yeah, that's it. Just try it over and over. Yeah, and try it on a smaller scale, especially um, until you kind of can figure out the whole registration mark and lining it up perfectly because it it is real sad <laughs> when you do it on a big scale and it doesn't line up perfectly. Right. <laughs> challenging. It is challenging. And even when I thought we like had it completely nailed, then it's, it surprises you again. So I... I will continue to practice. No, it's all practice. It's repetition. I know. Right. And I mean, that's what, anything with this machine, though, I feel like is there's always something new that happens and we learn from it every single time. But every also, single process, yeah, but a project. All, but this could expand what we can do. Yeah, no, I'm super excited. Like, I literally was just thinking of all the things we can do now. Yep. Since we can do bigger stuff. Cool. That's it. Sweet. So taking this up to Nashville, actually, let's talk about this. So what happened was 
she changed the design at the last minute. Mm-hmm. Originally, we were going right, to do, yeah. do backlighting, mm-hmm. we do this whole box, we're going to bring it up there, install it, paint it the same color as the wall, and her husband, William, decided, hey, why don't we change the backdrop completely? Instead of being just a solid colored wall, wall. he actually had, what was it, four, like four by eight uh, blow-up images that they've had of models that have done their, that have worn their hats. Mm-hmm. And so what they did, they were all black and white, and they had mounted them on the wall. They fit perfectly in their and space. They fit perfectly in their space. And yeah. so they kind of changed the colors. It was black and white, and so they decided to make their desk black um, instead of doing the wood top like we talked about originally. So all they wanted was a nice, clean, uh, just wood grain colored standoff sign from the wall. So that cut down a lot of headache for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we could go up there. And so we bought the standoffs. And so we were trying to figure out what would be the best plan to actually mount this on the wall and do it seamlessly and, and quickly. We built a template of the sign out of cardboard because it was cheap. Cardboard's cheap. And so each sign had a standoff, so it had to have a, a basically a threaded rod about six inches from the wall to the actual sign. And so what we did is we went ahead and drilled in the back or cut in the back using the laser machine. We cut holes, predetermined where all the letters were gonna be hung up and we matched that with a piece of cardboard on the wall. So when we walked up, we just basically just put the cardboard on the wall, taped it, leveled it up, got it centered up on the wall and wherever the pre-drilled or cut holes from the laser machine, we drilled those holes, we inserted the threaded rod and then we lined up our um, letters and logos and then we glued everything in, taped it off, let it sit overnight, came back the next day, pulled the tape and it was perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I was gonna say, you coming up with that guide was a lifesaver because I can only imagine how much longer it would have taken us to install that if we would have had to, if we just, if we didn't have a guide. Yeah, it would have, yeah. I think it was 40, 40 thread rods, so. Yeah, it would have, it would have been a nightmare and I'm sure Chaos, but we had it. Yeah, I mean, we had it up in thirty minutes to an hour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Yeah. We drilled those holes. Drilled those holes. <laughs> I can't even talk. We drilled those holes, and then. <laughs> Sorry. Dude, damn it. Uh, oh, and and leave a comment. Like, tell us what you wanted to see, or how dumb we are, or how smart we are, or any of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got thick skin. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Don't do that. <laughs>